Welcome back to the channel, guys. Another week has flew by, and uh, a lot happened last week, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So today, I hope to uh, I hope to plant some pear trees. My buddy Roger has a pear tree in his at his house. He really likes, and he took some uh, sprigs off of them. I guess this spring, last fall. I'm not sure when he did it but he sent them off and got them grafted to some rootstock. And he gave me a couple of them. And I think they're the soft pears. And, and all I have is the uh, Bartlett pears, which are pretty, pretty hard. They're delicious pears, but they're just pretty hard. So we're gonna plant these two trees today. And I need to, uh, I've never done it before. I need to put a clock spring on this 015 steel. It's a real nice chainsaw. 015 steel from the eighties. Uh, we've had it forever and ever. and it's been a real good chainsaw. Appreciate everybody watching and tuning in on the lives. That's been a great, good deal. I uh, enjoyed that a whole lot. It's Monday nights at eight o'clock is when we have it. And I uh, enjoy, enjoy all y'all dropping by and just kind of talking about the old times or whatever comes up. We really don't have an agenda. Uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I hit the live button with nothing on my mind to talk about. I do sometimes have something I want to point out, like maybe some mail that I got, uh, which the last live for you guys that may or may not called it, um, Ron, Ron Raglan was an artist, and if uh, I'll put a link to some pictures in uh, this video, I say pictures, prints, to Ron Raglan's prints that he sells. It's called Beagle Art, like Beagle the dog. Uh, BeagleArt.com, uh, I believe. But I'll put a link to it in this video, and you guys can check those pictures out. Uh, local guy that went to Raleigh and I think lifted weights in his, I don't know, it wasn't his career, but I think he was an avid weightlifter. But it was a pretty good deal. I cut a, I'll show you this ash tree I cut just a minute. But we're going to Let's get the post hole diggers and let's walk out this way and I'll show you that ash tree. This ash tree, I don't know, you probably have to watch maybe another video or two and you would see it. But it had died and it had a lot of limbs just threatening them to fall off right in the driveway where cars are a lot of times. So we cut it and I made it, I pulled it really because it was leaning towards me and I pulled it between those two trees with my truck, but I was way out in the, well, Will was way out in the pasture. I was cutting the tree. And that's what I skint my arm up on last week pretty bad. We're out here planting a pear tree. Um, I'm gonna put this one right here. There, there was a pear tree here at one time. This is kind of a section that's bare. Pear, pear, pear. And we'll have another one here. Um, I've always put these pipes right beside whatever I plant and I think they've helped over the years because what I do with them is I fill them full of water and that water slowly leaches out around the roots or up under the ground and you know I think it's helped keep some of these trees alive some of them have died for different reasons uh, you know fruit fruit trees is something man you gotta stay on top of them things like cultivating green beans. I mean, you got, uh, I, and I don't do it like I should, but I have learned that you gotta kinda stay on top of them and cultivate them just like any other crop. Keep them trimmed back right, which again, I not don't know how to do, but I'm learning and I'm trying to do a better effort of, of kinda looking after the trees. This pear tree here, I've just left it alone. Uh, I've let ice or wind break whatever leaves is going to break. In other words, I've let the Lord cultivate that tree, and it seemed to have done pretty good. These two right here, I've trimmed back myself twice. I've cut them back, and of course you can see they've shot straight back up again. Uh, you know, a lot of growth on them. But it's amazing, the one I haven't really messed with at all looks almost as good as them and you know and i've just let whatever comes along on that tree happen but we're going to dig two holes here one for the tree and one for my pipe and i'm telling you what this ground 
is hard as a brick. It's actually, the pulse hole diggers are thumping, thumping solid when they hit the dirt. And of course the dirt's just coming out like powder. I'm sure y'all can hear that. We may get Sammy to do the next hole. <laughs> that or we're gonna find us a <laughs> find us a lower spot down there to put the next tree, one that's in some uh, softer dirt. I know guys, I probably, it would be nice if I had a digger on the back of the tractor. Don't have a digger on the back of the tractor, but that's okay. Uh, we'll make do with what we got. Now Roger gave me these trees and looks like the graft is about right there. So we'll put this thing in here and try not to mess with the roots much and we'll get Sammy to come back over here in a little bit and put some water in this hole right Sammy yeah I decided guys to put the other tree here again there was something here that died probably apple and uh, we filled the hole up in the middle there and we'll put that one right here and see what she does replace this one that died and that tree right there is the one I'm gonna try to cut off and do just like I did that pear stump and we'll look at that before we leave and I want to put apples I'm gonna graft an apple back onto that tree. Make it a little wide because I think it root root base is wide. Alright. Get this one in there. You don't have to be real diligent over these trees in the next couple of weeks. Make sure they got plenty of water. I think we're supposed to get in some rain Tuesday. But we need to make sure they got plenty of water on them. All right, Sammy, let's look at this garlic. Nice roll of garlic, guys. I thought about putting fertilizer on it, but it's uh, it's awful leafy. I think we'll wait, maybe put some on it this spring and let her sit. Let her sit about that stage right there for the winter. Next project. So I mentioned earlier about last week or this past week, and man, some of the subscribers, you know, that. Uh, like Stan he you know we talked back and forth on stuff and anyway I was changing exhaust manifolds and I had every intention of videoing that and so Monday come along and I took the day off work Monday and I said okay I'll do the left side and when Sammy gets home I'll record the right side because I'll have some experience with it <laughs> and uh, be able to kind of maybe talk talk our way through it a little better well Lord and behold um, we broke, I, we, I was drilling some of the bolts out of the head of the truck and I broke one off. Well, I broke a easy out in the bolt that I had drilled. And you guys know easy outs like harder than diamonds, I guess. But, uh, 
So uh, Paul came over, another subscriber. He brought a little welder with him, and, and uh, we just never could really get the heat hot enough on it. So Roger told me, he said, uh, you know, get it back together, put it, you know, just snug tight the manifold, get it up here to the shop. So I got it up there Thursday, and of course this was Monday when that happened. You know, I'm kind of bothered by it all week, and uh, got up there Thursday to Rogers, and he was able to weld this washer on it and this nut, and he got a good stick on it, and he was able to work it back just little by little, little by little, little by little, until it finally started coming on out. So praise the Lord for Roger, and praise the Lord for getting this out. I I, oh, oh, I just hit the lock button. I really, matter of fact, I, it may have been Stan when I texted him and I was telling him about it. He said, I hope you recorded Roger getting that bolt out. And I said, Stan, recording that was the last thing on my mind. I was just so engrossed and prayerful that Roger could get it out and it wouldn't cost me $700 for a head on that perfectly good engine that I did not want to crack the top on a perfectly good engine. And so it was it was a blessing. Blessing to have Roger do it. Blessing to have it happen. But a saw. <laughs> I've never messed with the No. 15 either. So let's uh, let's look at this. We'll get this spring out. This is the spring it broke. This is probably going to unravel everywhere. Yep. Okay, so that's that, and that unravels everywhere. So the trick to this, I assume, is going to be that this don't unravel. Now, when I first got this, guys, I thought in my mind, I said, okay, well, maybe you take it out of this thing, but I don't guess that's the case, and we're certainly not, we're certainly not going to do that from the get-go. We're going to try to put it on there just like it is. Is there a way to pull the cap off after it's well, I don't, it in? Well, I don't. You know, that's another thing, too. Because that's what I would think. Is since this one didn't have a cap. Yeah. That's either the case or it's either going to unravel in front of us. Well, and also what I don't know is, you know, is this going to have room by the time? Well, that looks like that's going to have room, Sammy. So I'm going to say leave it in. That's what we're going to attempt to do. And I don't know if I'm winding that right or not. I'm sure I'll edit this video so it doesn't so it at least looks like I halfway know what I'm doing. I think that should come off, Sammy. Yeah, because I think it's not letting it have enough spin room. It's keeping it from spinning back. <laughs> Somebody on the video is probably saying, No! What, for taking it off? Yeah. Guys, we'll figure it out. Y'all don't kill me too hard in the comments. Take two for everybody that was yelling at me. Wow, it's getting dark too. Um, got it back in here. I put this on the table and just started it. Took that pair of pliers and just kept twisting, twisting and kind of rolled it back up in this little thing. But I still think it's got to come out of this. So I'm going to try it again. And if I'm wrong, y'all can... Tell me in the comments, but um, oh great, I 
cut it upside down now. Back again. So it's another day and uh, it was getting late yesterday evening and I was like, you know what? I need to stop before I break something. Had a wonderful, <laughs> we'll finish this in a second. I got an idea we'll try on that. Um, I had a wonderful trip this morning. Uh, me and Sammy, we wanted to, I wanted to get some tires for the white truck. And uh, we had a good breakfast. We went to, and you guys from around the area, you, you've heard of this, but some of you guys that watch are out in Indiana, Louisiana. We have a restaurant called Biscuitville. And Biscuitville has grown quite to size. And I think it started in Burlington, I believe. And it's grown some, a little bit in Virginia and all over North Carolina or the, you know, the middle part of North Carolina. And wonderful breakfast. I guess I have been eating there 25 years. And uh, they just have, you know, good gravy, biscuits, uh, fresh biscuits, uh, you know, the, you see them getting made right up front. And uh, we left there and we went to get some tires and I'll show you the tires after we do this clock spring, but we went to get some tires at a place called Southern Tire and he's probably been in business 35, 40 years. A uh, guy named Rick Mann runs it and wonderful place. These guys take care of your stuff so good. You don't have to worry about coming back out with warped rotors and tires that's bouncing on and off the truck and scraping your rims or you know trying to take a tire off with the weight still on it and uh, just a wonderful place really love them love to the, how they do their stuff and uh, got some Firestone Destination XT's um, which we had I, that's the first time I've left Firestone I mean left Michelin in a long time I've always been a Michelin LTX guy. Uh, Firestones came with the truck. They wore good, and they're not wore out. They're probably half the tread, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. This is what I got here. All right, so we're gonna take this thing. Yes, I watched a YouTube video. We're gonna hook this nail, and we're gonna take this drill here, We're gonna get it right there. Maybe choke up on it just a little bit. And we're gonna take this and wind her up tight. So what I gotta do now is see if we can get her unchucked long enough me to get that on there and now I got this push down and I'm gonna try to hold it a little bit yay Success. Look at there. Look at there. So, yes, this was probably some sort of holder where you got it on there and you work this off of it and it spread out in the case, which we didn't do last night. Watched a couple videos, seen this, uh, and I'm gonna save this. This 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 might could be used as an emergency spring if you couldn't buy another one. So we'll save that just in case. Um, might try to roll it up in a minute and put it in there, put a wire tie around it. But so we got it in, now we got to get it back on the saw. If I do break a pull string, I stand a chance of replacing the pull string because <laughs> I know how it works now. And the cover's back on. I think that's kind of an ingenious way that cover comes off. Don't know how many more years this thing will be in service. She's hard to find parts for. You could buy old girl, old girl spark plug, Sammy.
choke off. All right, the last thing I was trying to see. Can't buy a filter for it no more, guys, but you can buy this. And so we'll see if we can get this thing to fit here. For well, this saw, yep. I'm surprised somebody on eBay didn't have like a pack of 200. There was one. There was a new old stock filter like this, and they wanted $289 for it. I suppose it's got a little bit of fuel in it. Yep. Okay. We need to tighten the string up so what i'm gonna do since i know i gotta tighten it up and it works and i know what's going on now so it's a success just got a little slack here that will sometimes go in there it's just not reeling back all the way So probably should what I should have done when I was tightening that spring up. I don't think I showed it on camera. You had to take the string out and have it up in the air. Turn, 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 turn. I should have turned about two or three more turns. And she'd be pulling all the way back in there. But we won't worry about that today. We'll get some more string. And when we do it, we'll uh, have some more string on it. So anyway... Having said that, let's look at some tires. I feel a lot better than I did last night about the saw. At least I know what's going on and what I got to do to get that back in there. But so the tires, we were talking about Southern Tire and uh, we got, I wanted a tire, the tire, 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 tire tires. Y'all know my language, you know, it's kind of an art of its own. The tires were a Transforce ht and probably what i'll do is drive these things for you know four or five thousand miles and i'll probably do a review on these tires because i had some questions like how loud are they how do they feel going over the bumps air pressures and stuff like that and then really the only thing i could find out there to watch on the tire was you know talking about uh mud slinging stuff and and I, that's not me i wanted a tire that would be capable of doing it but i'm not necessarily going to do it i just wanted the capability like the 410 axle i have in that truck I, I don't need that 410 every day but when i need that torque or pulling power it's there so let's go look at them here they are and you've probably seen a little bit already on the video but transforce ht they had all the way across the board, they had excellent rain, snow, sleet, big deep treads here, guys. Um, I chose to do the white letter out. I thought that looked pretty good. And uh, we're gonna drive it over to the barn here in a second and put these, I said trans, I said Transforce, Destination XT, as in X-ray. We'll get it right. Here's the tires that were on it. And this is what I was saying. It's more of, to me, a road tire. And it was a the factory Transforce HT. And you guys know how I figure about factory tread. It's by no means wore out. It, it had some uh, miles left on it. I mean, I'd say it's probably got a good 10,000 miles left on these. But these will, these will make some good emergency tires because, you know, is the sun too bright behind me? Hopefully not. Guys, with, with today's world, you just never, you know, especially when, when the, uh, the, the bug was going around, that's what we're gonna call it, have to watch things on YouTube. When the bug was going around and everything was getting closed down, you know, you couldn't buy toilet paper, tires were hard to get, motor oil was hard to get, um, I try to stay one oil change ahead 
on my oil change on this truck and so that's why I'm keeping those tires. I mean, you never know. Uh, can't get no more tires. Well, at least you know you got a set. But uh, don't mean, mean to end the video on a somber note, but it's just the facts. You just kind of got to be ready and kind of keep things, keep things in the back of your mind. Okay, you know, uh, we can't control everything. Uh, I don't try to say that on this channel. I don't say, you know, try to say you be prepared for every little contingency. You can't, you got to rely on the Lord. And uh, that's what I do. And uh, but I do try to keep a couple things in mind. Just be ready. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanksgiving's coming up. I was gonna try to get another video out before. No, a little after Thanksgiving. Hopefully we can. I may do a video from Virginia. Just a short video. Show you around my father-in-law's place. It's a beautiful place up there. And just you know a couple things there, but. Uh, Y'all have a good week, a good day, and uh, God bless you. We'll see you.